Okay, we're back again, and uh, uh, my name is Peter Devine, and I'm the host of this presentation on the parallelogram law of forces. Uh, in our last video, we established that if you have an inclined plane, it's down a little bit, if you have an inclined plane, and we have a weight on that inclined plane, uh, and it's frictionless underneath, and it could slide. This is a right triangle, by the way. Uh, this was L1. This length here by hypotenuse we said was L2, and we'll just call this W. And we wanted to know what might be the tension that will just keep this block uh, from falling down the inclined plane, and we derive the formula F, which is that force that we're talking about, is equal to uh, the weight of the object times L1, which is the height of this parallelogram, over L2, which is the hypotenuse sort of, it, of this parallelogram. Now, um, this is what I would like to do. I'm going to draw another inclined plane, and I'm going to sort of, uh, what we call, the for there are several forces acting on this clock. One of them is the weight. Another is what is called the normal force, which is simply the force exerted by this plane, and it's perpendicular to this block because if there were any component that weren't, uh, if this weren't perfectly balanced, that is, uh, this would be sliding down. And the only other force that besides the tension of this, this support here that could be acting on it is some component of the, what is called the normal force. Um, but basically, because this is free to move, there is no other component dealing with this force in this direction. We imagine that it's on rollers. So the only possible force that could exist is perpendicular to the surface, and we call that the normal force. We're going to call that N, we're going to call that W. And we're going to call this F. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to draw another inclined plane here. And we're going to make this one of those right triangle inclined planes. Now, I call this angle theta, which is the angle in the corner of our first inclined plane. And um, this is a 90 degree angle because I drew this perpendicular to the surface here. Um, I'm going to call this angle B at the moment. And if this is B, this is theta, um, then since this is 90 degrees, and theta and phi have to add up to 90 degrees, this must also be phi, adding up to 90 degrees. And then this is also theta. Okay? So uh, through our rudimentary geometry, we should know these relationships. Now, um, even though it looks like these are the same, if I had drawn this a little bit better, they wouldn't be. This would be a little bit narrower. Uh, here, this is this is a bit narrower than this. Uh, the angle is a little bit smaller than this angle. And this angle also. So, uh, here we have the same situation as in our earlier triangle. I know these look about the same size, but they might not be. So, I'm going to call this side, I'm going to call this. L4, and then call this hypotenuse L5. Now this is a tricky thing. What we've really done now is 
I've replaced this, I've replaced this tension by the normal force of this support here. Uh, and, or what I should say, I've replaced the normal force here, that was here before, by the tension. We know the regular force, but we want to know the normal force. So I've replaced it, uh, this normal force, by a tension here. By putting it on this inclined plane and, say, having a rope there that would keep it in the same place. So what I have now is now I have a normal force from this plane and a tension going in this direction. Uh, in other words, I have two forces uh, acting in the same direction as my original forces, and they are keeping this weight in place. And therefore, I say that these two forces are not only the same in direction, but they must be the same in magnitude in order to exactly balance this weight. What I want to do, I already know what this force is equal to. I want to try and find out what this force is equal to. And we already have the formula for that. It's W times L4, the height, over L5, which is the hypotenuse. I'm going to call that, even though it's not the normal force in this case, it was my original normal force which I've replaced by the tension of this cord here. So, in this case, uh, I would like to look at L4 and L5, and you can see that as we have theta here, this angle, L4 is not as originally, uh, in my original case, uh, L1 was the opposite side to this angle, but in this case, L4 is the adjacent side of this angle, but L5 is the hypotenuse, just as before. So, what I'd like to do is, since these two triangles are similar triangles, that is, they are exactly the same shape, it means that the ratios of their respective sides are equal. And therefore, I'd like to replace L4 ratio of L4 to L5, I now say, is equal to the ratio of the, res of the respective sides in my original triangle, even though this triangle may not be the same size, but it's the same shape, and therefore the ratio of the respective sides in this triangle are equal to the ratio of the respective sides in this triangle. So, uh, in this case, you have L1, L2, I'm going to call this side L3 here, meaning this entire piece of my original triangle, the base of my original triangle. So the adjacent side, the adjacent side of this triangle, adjacent to this angle, divided by the hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be equal to the adjacent side of this similarly uh, shaped triangle divided by the hypotenuse, which is L2. So that means this is equal to, I should say, is equal to L3. Okay, so now I therefore change the normal force, which is a force originally for my original triangle, is equal to um, my weight times L3 over L2. Okay, fair enough. With L2 being the hypotenuse, L3 being the base, and L1 being the height. So, now, the normal force, if you look at this, for my original expression, we have but we have the normal force on this plus the force of tension. These two forces must be equal to a force equal and opposite to the weight. 
in order to hold the suede in place. So let's make sure, let's see what we have here. I'd like to know what the ratio of the, these different forces are. Um, the ratio of F over N is simply going to be F divided by N is equal to L1 over L3. In other words, uh, F, if we, in other words, if we represent the magnitude of F and the magnitude of L by lines, uh, they should, their magnitude should be in the proportion of the legs of that triangle. So, the legs of the triangle then, uh, what we would want to do is, if we drew this here, this would be the normal force here. Uh, the normal force. Um, this would have to be L3 if I drew a diagram like this. And then that would be the regular force. This would be represented by L1. And therefore, this would be represented by theta. Now, what about their relationship with W? How about F over W? Let's see what that would be. Um, that would be a good question. So, F over W is simply L1 over L2. In other words, their relationship would be as L1 is to L2, which is the hypotenuse. It's like L2. So, therefore, if we have a force acting in a direction such as such that one would form the base of a tri a right triangle and the other would form the height of the right triangle, the, the resultant of those two forces would be equ equivalent uh, to the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And this is actually the parallelogram law of forces. Uh, you might say it's a special case, but what we're saying simply is that we have one force like that, one force like that, and this is going to be our resulting force that these two forces are equivalent to. Now, uh, you say, well, that's not the parallelogram law of forces you showed me at the beginning. I just want to show you really quickly. Let's say we have a force acting not at right angles, but obliquely like that. Draw a line connecting the two. This force, according to, I'm going to draw now a perpendicular to this line here. This force I can represent by two forces like that. And this force, is, this force I can represent by forces like this. These two forces cancel out and we're left with the result of, which is just this diagonal to the uh, to the triangle or the diagonal to the forming parallelogram. And so we end up with the parallelogram law of forces. So I hope this wasn't too confusing to you. It's a little bit labyrinth and uh, hard to actually follow, but I hope you were able to get something out of this presentation. Thank you.